Got myself a new e-locker. There's the wiring harnesses and all that crap. You know, whatever. And instructions, um, they're important to Dana 30 and 35 models. They have these anti-rotation tabs here. And uh, if you notice, they, um, they take up part of the area that the ring gear would go. So this has to be removed before you put the ring gear on. And this, I think, can only be removed, or maybe it's just really hard to remove with the uh, bearings on. I think it's impossible, but there's a, a double wound uh, snap ring right there. So you gotta take that off. And then um, this whole assembly can come off. So you're gonna take yourself um, two screwdrivers, get a thin one and maybe a thick one or something like that. And once you can get this thing started, then you just work your way around. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not, but you just keep prying it up and sliding around. It's double wound, so it's going to take a while, but just keep doing that, and this will pop off. There you go. This whole assembly comes off. It's a two-piece thing. And then uh, there you go. Here's your three uh, pinions. These are what activate and lock your locker somehow. So, now you can get your ring gear on. So pop your ring gear on, then you can put that back on, then you can put your bearings on. Okay, try your best to uh, line up the holes, look at like one side and then the opposite side to make sure they're both lined up. And then, uh, you know, put a bolt in there. If you can't uh, fit the bolts at first, what I did was squeeze on both sides with my hands just to get it enough to get the bolt in there a little, and that'll keep it aligned. Then you can put all the other bolts in there and either hit it on the... You can knock it on with a, a dead blow from the ring gear side or suck them up with the bolts. I don't know if you're supposed to do the bolt thing, if it somehow damages it or something, but I'm going to do the bolt thing and work my way a couple, you know, a quarter turn to half a turn in a start pattern. So that's what I do with the other ones and it seems to work pretty well. Alright, don't forget your Loctite on the bolts. I got some blue. You can use some red. I just had blue because that's what I had. So, um, if you notice, the carrier split is on here. So it says Dana 30, 27, uh, spline, and then you got 373 and up. So that means that this will properly work with my 4.56 uh, gear ratio. I don't know if we'll be able to see it side by side. Um, it's really hard to tell. It doesn't really look like much but they will be uh, at a different uh, height with the bearing caps. I don't know, but that'll help us out. Anyway, um, it doesn't look like there's any provisions for the uh, C-clip to go in, so if you were planning on keeping your uh, central axle uh, disconnect system uh, and an Eaton E-locker up front, that might be an issue. And it kind of would be, because what's the point of having a locker if your vacuum motor goes out on you? And there's no way you're going to get a C-clip in there, from what I'm looking at. So, make sure that if you are doing an Eaton e-locker up front, and you do have the older vacuum uh, actuated shifter at the front, you're going to have to delete that. And you do that with these guys. So, I got some new shafts, well, some used shafts, that are uh, solid. And they got the bigger U-joints, so I painted them up, put them, some new U-joints in there, made them look all pretty. So, I'll be throwing them in as well. Just something to bear in mind. So, now that this guy's on here, uh, I'm going to have to figure out some way to hold this stationary so I can torque down all those nuts, or all those bolts to 75 uh, foot-pounds. Then you can put your collar back on. Don't forget your pins. Your pins are going to fall out. That's okay. The flat side goes in the bottom, like this. Don't forget your pins, or your locker will not lock. And it won't be fun, okay? Okay. Torquing this thing down was not nearly as easy as the other version. With this carrier, since it's got two flat spots, you can just put it in like a vise, or I was lucky that this was above ample size. So, I had to get a little creative. Um, this one was even harder than the Dana 35, because this one didn't even have the provisions. I couldn't stick anything through there. So I got a pipe that was about the same diameter, stuck that in there, and uh, that pipe is a little flimsy, so I also had a flathead as well, the biggest one I could find, wedged like that. So I have this against that, this I'm holding, and then this one 
the, the torque wrench I hold with my right hand and work my way around. So I don't think I damaged the case too much and I got the bolts tight. So, I guess that's a job well done. And there you go, this whole assembly, the stator is now set up. Uh, something to note, this is not a perfect triangle. Um, you have two of them that are really close together. These two pins are close together. And then this one is out by itself. So uh, just make sure that you know that there's going to be two here and one here when you go to put the thing back on. It'll only, it'll only fit on one way. So make sure that all these pins are in their pockets. There you go. Now the snap ring's on there. Uh, for the bearings, now we could put the bearings on and uh, set up the whole thing. I actually ordered uh, four of the uh, the bearings and two of the races. I'm going to use two of the bearings as setup bearings. So you take a grinder and grind the inside out. And you know, they're only seven bucks a piece. And if I'm only spending $14 to set up my gears right, then fuck it. Might as well. So, yeah, we'll make setup bearings like we did uh, this carrier before I found out I couldn't do what I wanted to. So, you want them to just be able to slide on and slide off, of course. So, when those show up, we can do that and actually set this up and maybe get a good reading. Waiting time. Alright, here's the new parts that came in. we got a races on the left, the LM102911s, 10, and then the bearings on this side, the LM102949s. 10, so, I'm going to take uh, two of the bearings that I bought and turn them into setup bearings, which just means that they can slide on and off easily. So I'm going to take my grinder and or Dremel or whatever you want to call it and grind away on the inside until that slips on and off easily. It'll take a little bit. And then I have the two full bearings so that when I'm finally done figuring out what kind of shims I need for the backlash, I can put those shims on and, you know, press the, the good bearings on. So, that'll be fun. My Dremel of choice, this guy right here, a little green stone bit, seems to do rather well. That's what I did the other bearings with, and it does a decent job. Definitely takes a while though, so, yeah. <sighs> Alright, so I decided to switch to a different bit. Instead of this guy right here, I found this one. A lot longer, and it's a little easier to keep the pattern smooth. And after a good amount of work, it'll slide on and off, I think. I don't know, sometimes it goes on real easy, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if it expands and gets hot or something, but see? It goes on and off if you angle it just right. So, that's a setup bearing. Time to make one more! Yeah! Okay, um, something to note. Um, when you're doing the uh, Eaton E locker up front for the uh, the Dana 30, uh, you cannot use the standard um, carrier shims. They don't fit. They have their outer diameter is a little smaller than the locker, so you will need uh, different shims if you want to be able to shim your new locker carrier. So what you're going to have to do is get Dana 44 shims because they are shimmed on the inside and they fit. So, Dana, uh, Dana 44. A little bit of wiggle room, but they're shims. It doesn't fucking matter. So, I got all them measured out, and uh, I'm going to start messing around with them until I can get some good backlash, and then we'll worry about the pattern. So, uh, I might mess the backlash a little bit, but uh, for the most part, <laughs> the lockers, the, the gears are set up. I'm, I'm very happy with this. After all the fucking crap I had to go through to get the, uh, the 35 done, this 30 is a piece of cake. But uh, once you get a pattern that you like and it's real good, uh, you gotta sit here and drill a hole somewhere in the housing. Uh, also, the, uh, the anti-rotation tabs on the 30 seem to do their job a lot better than the 35. The 35 had a good lot, almost an inch of travel back and forth, and this one's not even close. This one barely wiggles, so I like that. But yeah, you gotta find a good spot for this wire to sit and uh, drill yourself a good old, I think it's a half inch hole. Uh, I doubt I'm gonna be able to get on the left side of this. So I think it's gonna have to sit somewhere right here, which is fine because that's kind of where the wire wants to go anyway. All right, well, I'm gonna mess with the uh, results a little bit and uh, see if I can get anything better than that, but that's damn near perfect, so.
I think it's just about time to put our good berries on. Now, I only ordered one set of races, so I'm going to clean these off so that they can be used in the final production. Pop these races off. Don't forget what shims were on what side. Put your new bearings on. And then after that, you're good to drill holes and rock and roll. Alright, here's everyone's favorite part. Pressing the bearings on. Make sure that they're facing the right direction with the cone, you know, pointing like this. Make sure your shims are on there and cleaned off and there's no grit or anything and oil up both surfaces. Make sure that whatever you're using to press the bearing on is not pressing against the cage, only the inner part because the cage is very flexible and flimsy and if you bend that at all, your bearing's toast. So, there. Press bearings on. I almost forgot. Uh, before you start putting all your new stuff in there and cleaning everything up, uh, there's one last thing you gotta do for the e-locker. And that's to drill a half inch hole so that that wire can come out. Um, I'm gonna drill it into the housing. I did that with the back and it went really well. Uh, since the gas tank was out, I could access the uh, housing from the top and just drill straight down. That was easy. Now this one's gonna be a little different because uh, there's not really any room to access it from the top. It's gotta be on the right side because of course that's where it sits on the carrier. So if you look, there's a little pocket here in between where this, uh, where it sits up there and uh, where this bolt hole is, there's a little pocket. And I'm gonna try and drill into that pocket. And since I can't get it from the top, I'm gonna have to go from the bottom at a slight angle. But uh, just be aware of what you're drilling through and where you're at. You don't want to hit any threads. You don't want to hit any mounts. You want to make sure the wire will actually fit, that your drill will actually fit. Because <laughs> remember, eventually you got to work your way up to a half inch. So I'm using the half inch just to make sure that, oh, okay, I can actually fit in there without any problems. So unless you got like a really itty bitty drill or something like that, you might have to get a little creative. And hey, if, it, if it's not perfectly sealing, you know, you can put a little RTV on there. It's at the top of the housing, so unless you regularly, regularly drive it upside down, you won't really have much of an issue. So, alright. Okay, it's a lot darker. <sighs> that fucking hole's finally there. Holy shit. That took a lot longer than expected. There's all the metal shavings. There's a lot more on the ground. Holy crap! It was a lot harder to make sure that I was going in the, the direction that I wanted to, but I looked at like some bolt holes to figure out where the drill should sit, and where I wanted my angle, the drill should be sitting right in the middle of these two bolt holes when it goes up, because I have to clear this. And I just perfectly got it. I drilled into that a little bit just now, but oh well. Probably what that was catching on. But it was uh, very difficult, but it's gonna fit. That's like just barely there. It's right in between. And the battery's dead, okay, cool. Well, it's about to rain and uh, all kinds of other crap, so uh, it's time to finish this some other day. All right, next step for your ear locker, once you got your hole drilled and you got your final pattern and everything's all set up, torque your carrier bolt, or your carrier, carrier cap bolts down to 60 foot-pounds, and then you can run your wire. So um, I'm going to put some RTV around this just in case it doesn't seal as well. I'm also going to put some up here in this little hole just so that the wires are totally sealed up. So, he's going to do that. And I got some uh, specially doodle -dee -dee. Gear oil RTV gasket maker. So I'm just gonna wrap some around all these rings and stick it through, and then we can put the cover on and fill it up with oil and stuff. Well, once the axle shafts go in. There you go, RTV is in place. Come up there, it seals the, uh, the housing nicely. So even though it's slightly warped just because of how the, the, uh, the case is, it still uh, should seal. It's a little messy up here, but, um, you know, I got the inner gap filled and some of the outer, so whatever. Shouldn't have any problems with that. So now you just throw your butt connector on there, and then um, you can hook up your uh, harness to it. So I'm going to put the cover back on. Got my uh, Felpro gasket on here. Because fuck RTV. And the bolts. So, cover it up. Make it look pretty. If you ever have uh, issues trying to fill up your um, 
your diff with fluid. This is how I do it. Just take your bottle, cut off the tip, and uh, use a little rubber hose. It works real great. This is only like a couple inches, probably four or five inches. That's all you need. And just keep squirting in until it starts running out. So usually it takes me uh, about a bottle and a half, or uh, a quart and a half, I should say, of uh, gear lube to fill this up. So I'm going to fill this up, and uh, we'll see how it goes.